Well, joining us live in studio tonight to further discuss this issue is opposition leader Michael Pintard. Mr. Pintard, welcome to Eyewitness News. Thank you very much. Well, we just heard the hedge strategy remains in place, but according to the statement the FNM released earlier today, if this was the case, the increase would have been avoided. In your view, is this still being practiced and are is government getting the results that the previous administration had anticipated? I believe the government has to come clean with respect to the hedge program. We do not believe that the same hedge program is in place. When we had put it in place, it was at 10.5 cents per kilowatt. The government has now projected they'll go to 27, 26.7 cents, which is really a 163% increase in terms of the cost of fuel that is being passed, the cost that is being passed on to the consumer. Had they executed the trade during the time they came to office and they did receive advice from the technical team that was in place, and of course even some of the new members of the board understood that program very well, had they executed that uh, when they came to office, we would not be in this position. This is really a failure of the government to follow through on the strategy that was left in place in order for consumers, for businesses to simply predict how much they're going to pay over time. So you're saying the plan that was in place, according to the government, still in place, but in your view, not in the way that the former administration no, we, had it mapped out. We, we would like them to produce the evidence that they are, in fact, continuing the hedge program. We clearly know that we had left in place a program where there would have been predictability in what the consumer would pay at home as well as businesses. That predictability is, is certainly gone. And of course, the government's argument that because of the rising cost of fuel, they are now forced to, to take this action seem to me to be untrue. For the simple reason that we are now moving from close to $130 uh, a barrel down to 90 So in fact, uh, the cost of fuel is in, in increasing at a time when the government is now passing through the cost. The, the prime minister... Um, had indicated he would find creative ways to avoid having a serious conversation with the country about what must happen with BPL. Clearly, um, he hasn't done that. So what other measures would you suggest government to take at this time? Uh, normally, when we see increases, businesses normally say, well, we leave that as the last resort. What are your suggestions on the way forward as opposed to passing this rate on to consumers? Well, I mean, one of the things the prime minister has to do is just have an honest conversation with the Bahamian people in terms of what we are up against. That has not happened, and then he has to be on the same page with his board and his minister. They are continually uh, talking uh, about the same subject in different ways. The other thing is they had a window when they came to office to implement the rate reduction bond, which I believe we should have implemented while in the chair. They had an opportunity early uh, to tackle the issue of the legacy debt, the capital upgrades that are required, and to deal with recurring expenditure. They missed that window. Now that inflation is high, they're saying that that can no longer be on the drawing board. Well, the prime minister must bring a plan of action and let the public know what he intends to do to deal with the rising uh, costs of In your of view, it is not what took place today, the plan of action that the prime minister has no, laid out him no, coming to the people unfortunately, and saying that this is what we plan to do? No, unfortunately, the prime minister, uh, nor the CEO, uh, laid out a plan of action over time. In fact, the Prime Minister, uh, um, the, uh, the Prime Minister, and of course the Minister with responsibility for BPL has signaled that they are going to amend the law, the Electricity Act, um, in fact the, the regulations, so that they could now um, make legal something that they announced today that's not permitted in law, which is when you pass on the cost to consumers, you can't pass on a different cost to different categories of consumers. All consumers must pay the same pass-through cost. So the Prime Minister um, really has become quite famous for making decisions that may be inconsistent uh, with the law and then coming behind to amend uh, the law to, to catch up with a bad decision that has been made. We are waiting to hear from IRCA. We, we are quite uh, flabbergasted why IRCA has not weighed in on this issue given a rise of 163% cost uh, to consumers.
Mr. Pinto, I'll give you this uh, final question. But we have this situation with BPL under the former administration. There was some downsizing, some other cost-saving measures took place, but the company still appears to be struggling financially. In your view, is it time for government to take energy business out of the hands of the government and turn it over to the private sector? I think a plan that was left in place uh, sought to ensure that BPL would function in an efficient manner. And one of the reasons there was a discussion of the rate reduction bond is because there was a need to raise the necessary funds to reduce that legacy debt, which could then save you money because you're, pay you're paying a tremendous amount of money in terms of interest rates, etc. And then, of course, you have to manage state-owned enterprises in an efficient way that they cannot be employment agencies. And, of course, you, you must hold... Are uh, all um, cost centers at your, at your corporation responsible for making sure you, you are servicing equipment on time, you're using the right mix of fuel so that you do not accrue additional costs? In my estimation, there was a plan left in place that was producing dividends and uh, it has been abandoned by the progressive liberal party. So the plan would equal no privatization in your view if that was followed? Uh, again, the Davis administration, it is now in their lap to tell us what their comprehensive plan is going forward. We are willing to sit with them, look at the facts that they have in front of them and give advice. Uh, unfortunately, he has not come with a plan. 100 days plus after, 365 days after he came to office, he has not fulfilled what he has said, which is to bring electricity costs down. Finally, in your view, will we see that shell deal being materialized? Again, the prime minister has, has been quite quiet on, on this issue. Uh, I think he has a marvelous opportunity to engage stakeholders in a, in a mature conversation about what the challenges are that BPL face and what the options are as a country uh, that we have available. I believe that he would get tremendous advice from persons who have served through multiple administration on boards who would give sensible and reasonable suggestions to him. He fails to make those tough decisions and fail to engage a variety of stakeholders so that we can get to the finish line. Opposition Leader Michael Pintar, thank you so much for joining us live in studio tonight. Thank you for having me.